All right. And up next, let's talk about the JSX rules. So before we discussed the rules for the components, and again, I'll repeat, capital letter, and we need to return something. Now let's talk about the JSX rules. So essentially the stuff that we are returning. And let's start with this one. We always, 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 always need to return a single element, basically one parent element. So if we take a look at our return, we can go here as wild and crazy as we want. So let's imagine that I want to go here with div. Inside of the div, I decide that there's going to be a heading three. And in there, I'll say hello, people. After that, we want to go with an ordered list. In there, there's going to be a list item. Inside of the list item, I'm going to go with an href. For now, I'm just going to add the hashtag over here. Don't worry, there's probably going to be a warning in the console. We don't really care about it. And let's say over here, hello world. Let's save it. And as you can see, everything works. There are no issues. And as I said, not, I don't want this one over here. However, problems are going to start if for some reason I decide that, you know what? Right next to this div, I need to have a heading too. So not inside of the div, but right next to it. Check it out. Right away, I have this red squiggly line pretty much running all throughout my code. Why? Because we cannot, we cannot return in JSX adjacent elements. So we always, always need to return a one parent element. So what's the solution? First, let me type some kind of code. I'm going to go with hello world. And effectively, what we want to do is to wrap both of them. So for now, I'm just going to go with div and I'll talk about why maybe it's not the best way. But let me grab the opening and closing tag and check it out. The moment we save everything works again. So I know I already said this a thousand times, we need to return one parent element. So once we refactor, we are good to go. Now, this is not a rule, but keep in mind that whatever elements we set up, they actually live in the browser. So we are actually returning them. It's not like we're just making them up in a code. Notice I have div, div, and then heading two. So again, this is not a rule. If your favorite element is div, you can definitely do so. Who am I to judge? But I do suggest sticking with HTML semantics where we can use the section element, we can use the article, and of course, whatever element you want to create. So for nav, we can use nav, footer, header, and hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Again, it's not a rule. If you want to add, I don't know, 100 divs in your component, absolutely. React is not going to complain about it. However, as far as maintaining the code, it might be an issue down the road. Again, just a suggestion. And also another approach we can take, if let's say you don't want to add any semantic elements and you're also maybe not in a fan club of div, you can add fragment. So fragment allows us to group elements without adding those extra nodes. And essentially we have two ways how we can use that. We can go with react a dot and then fragment. So notice the syntax, it's kind of like a component opening and closing one, or there's a shorthand. So in here we can go with angle brackets and we just need to make sure that we close it. So let's try it out. I'm going to go back to index.js. Let's say that I don't want to go with section, which is also an option, of course. So once I save here, notice now the section is returned, not a div. But if let's say I'm not a fan of that type of approach, I can just remove the code and I can go to react dot and then fragment. So we're importing react. That's something you'll need to do then if that's the case. And we go with react dot fragment. And once we save notice that essentially there's not that extra div. So we have ID root, but we don't have that div, 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 div type of syntax. We only have this one div that we have over here. And like I said, the shorthand is following. Just remove the stuff and everything is going to work. After that, let's talk about 
the camel case property naming convention. If you're familiar, when it comes to attributes in the index.html, you write them in the following way. For example, tab index on click for read only. When it comes to JSX, don't be surprised if you see the camel case property naming convention. Please don't worry about this code, effectively what it's doing, the values and all that. Just focus on naming here. So instead of tab index, we're going to type tab index as a camel case. If we want to use four for the label in the JSX, we'll use HTML4. Again, those are just the rules. And of course, as we're progressing with the course every time, we'll add that camel case property. I'll tell you, hey, this is the rule that we need to use. And this is just something that you need to remember. Again, please don't focus on this code. I'm not going to type it. We're going to cover all of this in great detail, essentially why we have those funny curly brackets and all that. For now, just don't be surprised if you see this type of naming convention. Also, speaking of naming conventions, we don't have class, something that I already showed you when we work with Emmet. So if I go back, and to this div, I want to add some kind of class. It's not going to be class. So you can type here like this, but it's not going to work. We need to go with class name. Again, just the rule that we need to remember. That's it. We need to go with class name, and then we provide some kind of value over here, some class name. And then if we take a look somewhere there, yep, notice. Eventually in the browser, it's set up as a class. But in our code, it's going to be a class name. And up next, let's discuss how we need to handle elements that don't have the closing tag. So as you know, in HTML, we have some elements that do have closing tags, and some that don't, for example, image or input. And HTML5 has somewhat spoiled us where if we want, we can omit the self closing and everything is going to be rendered just fine. However, we cannot do that in React. All the elements that don't have the closing tag, we need to self-close them. So essentially, you need to add this forward slash. Otherwise, you'll get an error. So if I navigate over here, and let's say I'm going to go with input, and I'll say text. If I remove the forward slash, I'll right away get an error. So make sure if you use the element that doesn't have the closing tag, to self close it. And lastly, let's talk about the formatting. As you've probably noticed, when it comes to return, sometimes we have these parentheses, and sometimes there are no parentheses. So what's up with that? Well, you see, parentheses are here to help us. Technically, you don't need to use them. So now let me go back to the heading two. And let's say, hello world, I save and everything works. However, if by mistake, I move this to the next line, you'll see that it right away gets grayed out. And essentially, we'll have no content in the browser. So if you're not using parentheses, you need to make sure that your opening tag is in the same line as return. So set it up here. And I removed one character. And then we can do whatever we want. So again, we save it. And then of course, prettier formats for us. If you have parentheses, you don't need to worry about it. And a friendly suggestion, keep in mind that we're using prettier. So a lot of times prettier will add them or will remove them. So I wouldn't suggest stressing about it. Just something to keep in mind. So notice over here, if I have those parentheses, it doesn't really matter where the opening tag is. I save it and, and prettier removes it for me anyway. Just keep in mind the general concept. If you want to add them, add them. If not, make sure that the opening tag is in the same line as the return.